Hey folks, in today's COPS quick tip, I want to take a look at building out some different types of noises and hooking them up to the quick material node in SOPS so we can get a look and feel for some different sci-fi like materials. Let's go. I'm going to throw down a geo node here, jump in and I'm going to throw down a COP2 network. I'm going to dive into my COP2 network here and I'm going to open up the compositor. And in here, I'm going to put down a VOP COP generator. We can use the VOP COP generator to create our own noise patterns within COPS. And the big advantage to it is, is we get lots of resolution. So let's go and set up our resolution now. I'm going to go to Edit and down to my Composite Settings, or Alt, Shift and I. And I'm going to change the default to 1024 by 1024. Now, I want to do this because all of the... Uh, generator nodes like like noises and the color nodes and ramps and things like that will go to the default project size so if I want them all to be the same size I want to set that up at the start gonna jump into my vopcop here we're going to build out some noise in here and we're going to use the unified noise type to do this something to just be aware of is that if we look at the unified noise help node over here we can see that it comes with a note and that it there is two versions of unified noise. Uh, one is static and is pre-compiled, so it's a bit faster. And the other one is dynamic. Now, uh, dynamic in this case means that you can change the noise type and the fractal type. So if we use the static type, we will not be able to promote the noise type parameter. So you won't be able to change from whirly over to purlin at the cops level. You will have to dive into the VOP the whole time. Um, it will be a bit faster, but you'll lose that functionality. Now, since I'm going to be playing around with this node quite a lot for different types of noises, I want access to the noise type. So we will be using the dynamic type, which will be a little bit slower because it will need to compile. We're going to use unified noise here. Now, I want to drive the position, which I'm expecting to be up here and near the top because it's pretty important, but it's sort of hidden away down here under this other section. It is a vector that's a lighter green color and our X and Y position are floats. That's why they're this more washed out green. So we will need to convert the types. So we're going to go from a float to a vector first. So we're going to take these two floats and plug them in. And then we're going to go from a vector over into position. Then we will need to go from a vector back to a float so that we can hook up the noise to the or G and B, which are float values. Now there is some noise there. It's very, very large. So we'll need to adjust it. Uh, we can do that in just a minute. We're going to promote the parameters first. So I'm going to come down here and say, create input parameters. Now it's going to give me this error. And that is uh, because of what I mentioned in the help docs. It does not want to promote the uh, signature and noise type. So we will need to delete these two parameters down here, F scale and the signature as well, I think. And now it will work for us. So if we jump back up to this level, we can see that we have access to some of our controls just here. Uh, rather annoyingly, it will put the new parameters down in this section down here. If you wish, you can go in and edit the parameter interface. So I have previously added a noise parameter folder, which I save as a permanent default. So I can scroll down here and I'm looking to go under sequence. That's the last of the, the normal folders. So here's all of the things that we just promoted and I can grab all of those and I can just drag and drop them under the noise parameters folder here and click accept. And that just cleans up my interface just a little bit. That's not a requirement. It just helps with my OCD. Um, so now we can go and adjust all of our values up here. So I'm going to change the noise type from simplex over to Whirly Cellular F1. And that's going to get me more of this cellular like shape. I'm going to change the frequency. So I'm going to put it up to maybe around four. So now we can start to see the cellular breakup. We can of course go in and play with all of these values and I would encourage you to do so. By default, this is not tiling. You can in theory go and play with the periodic values here. Uh, to try and get it to tile correctly. Though the trade-off will be you will lose some of the randomness. So I'm quite keen to get this back in into SOPS. 
But within cops, I want to be able to control the colors here so I don't get just black and white. Yeah, so I'm going to use a blend node to blend some colors. I could use a composite node, I guess, as well here, set to average maybe, and should get me probably a similar result. Uh, but I'm just going to use the blend here. So, and I'm going to put down a, two different color nodes here. Let's make one of these orange, and let's leave the other one at white just for the moment. And we can control this with our mask. And this does not get me what I expect, which is that this, that this black and white mask here is going to control where the orange appears and where the white appears. And that, of course, is because I have not checked my alpha. Now, so you just need to do this all the time. Much as in Nuke, you need to check that your alpha is what you expect. If I come over my viewport here and I hit the A key, I can see that my alpha is, in fact, just all white. So I need to go and create a correct alpha here. I can quickly check this on the thumbnail as well by uh, opening up the thumbnail and I can click here to go through my various different planes. And we can see that the alpha here is all white, so I get all of one color, in which, in this case, the first input. I need to go and create an alpha. I can do that using a channel copy, and I could channel copy the red channel into the alpha, for example, or I can jump into my VOP cop here, and I can take one of these float values, and it's a black and white image, so they're all the same, and I can plug that into alpha just here. And if I go back up, and if I come back down to my blend node here, I'm expecting it to have changed. Now it hasn't, and sometimes you need to give it a bit of a kick. So I'm going to just try it, yeah. So I can push it over to CR here, or CG. I'm going to put it back to C, uh, to A, and yeah, you can see I just needed to give it a little bit of a kick here. And now the mask is controlling those values. So if I come back up here and I change my frequency, yeah, you can see the mask is controlling those values now. So this is an easy way for me to pump colors into my mask. Now what I want to do is pump this back out into SOPS. So I'm going to put down a null at the end here. Uh, we'll just call it, I guess, sci sci-fi. And we'll say C for color. While we're here, we might as well create a normal map as well. So I'm going to put down a labs normal from grayscale. I'm just going to increase the strength here a little bit just so we can see that, yes, the cellular-like pattern is showing up. I will probably need to flip the Y. I will do that on the material node up in SOPS. So we'll just copy this null here to keep the naming the same and change this to in for normal. I'd also like to be able to control the roughness as this is going to be a shiny type sci-fi material. So I'm going to copy all of these guys just over to here by holding the Alt key and just dragging them across. Put down a null down here, just copy that null as well, and we'll call this R for roughness. Now, in the case of my roughness map, I want it to be uh, very light, because it's going to be a shiny material overall anyway. So I'm going to set this one to 0 0.5. The other one is already set to 1. Uh, if I want to have slightly better control over the values there, maybe I can add levels just in between. if we want to uh, drive how harsh the mask is, and that will be my sci-fi roughness out. Now, because we have an alpha on all of these, it is a good idea just to delete the alpha. If you don't do this at the bottom of your graph here, the alpha will control the transparency out in our OpenGL viewport. So usually what I do is I just come in and delete the alpha plane, unless I need it for something specific. I'm just going to delete it for all of these. So that should be my base cop setup done. Let's jump back up to our SOPS view. Now, something that I've only recently realized is that the, the COT network itself comes with a default plane. Uh, it's set to mesh by default. And if you zoom in on it, you'll see there's a default plane here. And by default, what it's doing is it's displaying the node with the export flag on it, uh, which in this case is actually this node here. That's what this brown guy represents the export node. So if I was to put it down here, it's now displaying this particular part of the graph. Now, in my case, what I actually want to do is use a quick materials node because I want to be able to control more than just the base color. So I'm going to put down a quick materials node here and I need to change my cop net from mesh to quad with UVs. And now I have to go and hook up my various different parameters here to my textures. The easiest way to do this is to split off your viewport so you can be in COPS and SOPS at the same time. I'll try and do another quick tip on my own desktop setup for doing this kind of stuff. But I have a setup already, so I'm going to jump over into it. 
So now I have cops over here and I have sops on my left hand side. And what I can do is I can come down to grab my color here. I can drag and drop it in just here. Uh, and that gets me the full path towards that null. And I have to put OP colon in front of it. And that will grab me the color. Now I can go and grab the normal map as well. And I can put OP in front of this. And I can do the same thing for my roughness. Now all of my texture maps are loaded in. I'm going to go back to my cop network here and I'm just going to change the orientation so that it is facing upward. Now I've got a normal map in here in roughness, but of course I've got no lights, so we can't really see the effect. So I'm going to jump up to the OBJ level here. I have a little default setup I use for lights, which I've stored on a shelf. And again, if you hit me up in the comments, uh, I might try and find some time to go and create a short tutorial on setting up the lights. Now the issue here is, is that my cop net is very, very small by default. So I'm just going to put down a transform node and I'm going to transform it up. And now you can see, yeah, my lights are somewhat relative to my grid here. I can jump back up to my OBJ level here and I'm just going to play around with the lights and I'll come back to you in one second when the lights are set up. So I've just kind of adjusted the lights just so I can see a little bit more of the normal map popping up. I'm going to jump back into my object here and play around with my quick material settings because i'm going for a more sci-fi type of feel i'm going to increase my metalness just a bit here uh, i'm going to play around with the roughness and the ior as well and i'm going to flip the y on the normal map so i pause the video and i played around with my setup a little bit i'm not quite sure why but because this is set to one it is causing the open gel viewport to draw incorrectly this is most likely just one of those joys of graphics cards things you may or may not run into it uh, in my case all i have to do to fix it is just lower this value down a little bit and you can see that it is behaving itself a little bit better now uh, i can go back and adjust all of these values uh, so in my case i'd like that the other way around i don't want it to feel quite so orange so i'm going to go back to my mask here and i can complement it and that will flip it in the other direction and now i can come along and maybe change this over to maybe a red or something like this and I'm getting this kind of nice cellular, maybe sci-fi type pattern a little bit. So this is the basic setup where I can now control the color, the roughness and the normal map. Uh, all using the same basic noise shape. So what I would suggest you do now as kind of a further study is to try out the different noise types. They're quite fun to play around with. I'm going to go do the same and I'll before I wrap up, I'll show you some other examples of different noises that you can create. So I've gone and adjusted my quick material here and I uh, played around with the roughness, the IOR, and I made it a good bit more metallic so, so we get a nice sheen across the surface. And I went and created some more noises over here. This is the Warly pattern we had previously. That's the one we're looking at at the moment. We can change this over to this one here. This is using the unified noise type and it is set to Perlin. And I'm playing around with the periodic value. So I get this repeating shape across the surface. Which gives this kind of maybe an iodized metal kind of feel to it maybe. Uh, this one over here is again unified noise. This was the static type. So I have to jump in and out to change the um, to change the type here. In this case it's set over to Chebyshev uh, Cellular. So let's go and take a look at that one. And we get that kind of blocky sci-fi panel kind of feel. Now it does pop if I go over the top, that's the normal map popping in the direction. But you can see that fairly quickly with the one noise type, and there's quite a few other ones in there, I get lots of different patterns fairly quickly. So this is a relatively flexible setup for creating uh, some base type materials within cups. So hopefully you're starting to get a feel for some of the possibilities of creating textures within cups. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip and I will see you in the next video.